Well, first of all, let me say that uh, so far it really has been a very exciting Congress, uh, a very great ESMO 2022 with so many interesting data presented um, yesterday and, and today. Yesterday, for instance, we saw this uh, proffered paper uh, session on metastatic breast cancer with so many interesting data that were presented there. Just to mention a couple of study, maybe uh, the Tropics O2, the overall survival data were presented yesterday by Dr. Rugo. And uh, just to give a bit of context, uh, Tropics O2 is a randomized phase three trial uh, that tested uh, um, Sacitudzumab Govitecan versus uh, treatment of physician's choice in patients with the pretreated hormone receptor positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer. And uh, the landmark analysis of this trial had already been presented at ASCO 2022. So uh, from ASCO 2022, we already knew that uh, uh, Sacituzumab govitecan was associated with a significantly improved progression-free survival compared to treatments of physician's choice. Although the magnitude of benefit was not uh, uh, huge, but I want to underline that uh, the kind of patients that were enrolled in Tropics O2 are patients that were heavily pretreated with between two and four prior lines of treatment in the metastatic setting. And uh, what we observed at ESMO uh, 2022 yesterday were the data on overall survival because uh, at ASCO 2022, this data on overall survival were still immature. And what we observed yesterday was uh, that Sacituzumab govitecan is associated again with a significant improvement uh, in terms of overall survival. Again, the magnitude of benefit uh, is limited, is around three months uh, with an hazard ratio of 0 0.79. But still, I want to underline that the kind of population enrolled in this study consists in heavily pretreated patients. So patients for whom we do not have so many therapeutic uh, options in our clinical practice. So it is a population that really represents a high unmet medical need. So it's interesting to see that such Tudzumab govitecan, that is an agent that is a uh, changing the treatment landscape, for instance, in triple negative breast cancer in second line, is still also uh, showing some promising results also in other breast cancer subtypes, like patients for it, the hormone receptor positive, HER2 negative uh, breast cancer. And uh, besides uh, Tropics uh, uh, O2, also we saw the results from the Monarch 3 trial. Monarch 3 is a randomized phase 3 trial uh, testing uh, the addition of a bemacyclib to endocrine therapy with aromatase inhibitors for patients with hormone receptor positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer in first line. And again, also for Monarch 3, we had already saw the results in terms of progression free survival that had been published in JCO in 2017 that showed a significant improvement in progression free survival associated with the abemacyclib. What we saw yesterday at ASMO 2022 were the data in overall survival. Actually, this is an interim uh, overall survival analysis, the interim analysis too. And abemacyclib is associated with a numerical longer overall survival compared to placebo, but these results did not meet the statistical, uh, the threshold of statistical significance as per a statistical study design. I want to underline that this is not the final overall survival analysis. The final overall survival analysis will be performed around two, in, in 2023 when the number of events, both in the intention to treat population and in this subgroup of patients that were the patients with visceral metastasis will be reached. So uh, hopefully we will see this overall survival, final overall survival analysis in, in 2023. And again, uh, other, yeah, una, another study that was presented yesterday that I just want to mention because uh, I think it's very interesting was the, the synergy trial. So Dr. Buistre presented the results of the primary endpoint of the synergy. Synergy is a phase two randomized clinical trial that tested the combination of oleclumab, that is a, a monoclonal antibody anti-CD73, in combination with the immune checkpoint inhibitors of durvalumab and chemotherapy as a first line for patients with metastatic triple negative breast cancer. And the primary endpoint of the trial was the clinical benefit rate at 24 weeks. And unfortunately, uh, the, the addition of oleclumab 
Pluma didn't uh, show an improvement uh, in terms of clinical benefit rate at 24 weeks, so the study is negative. But I think that there are some very interesting aspects in this study. For instance, the fact that in both arms uh, there were some exceptional long-lasting responses, and uh, I think that it would be very interesting to see the results of the translational analysis of this trial that are ongoing, and also, for instance, to understand whether there are some differences uh, at a translational level between these patients with this exceptional long-lasting response and patients who didn't respond to, to the treatment, for instance.